all right so recording um, let's see do we have everything here okay well let's review a little bit from yesterday actually I put up some older videos from the CD home too like for example the panels being built on a second floor for comparison I'm, I'm looking at it wow that was like here this video here um, Oh man, that was scary. That kind of that when we were doing this, uh, this was kind of slow. It was much slower. We had a lot of issues because we had the house wrap on and. I'm not sure on the desktop. No. How about now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah like wow, well, guys, remember this? That was kind of scary. Like when I just look at this here without the rails and the self alignment at the top you're fighting every joint and that's what took a lot of time so you're fighting like every joint here like we have to put a scab everywhere um, you're kind of fighting uh, getting through the insulation to make the connections there's the house wrap that you're kind of struggling with and a soft uh, soft insulation outside we kind of eliminated by design a lot of this this kind of feature in the workflow so now it's like okay much more pleasant and stuff like that but just uh, oh, shit, Jeff, Jeff was uh, in on that we had to pull him in we needed some help um, but um, check this out maybe just just some review uh, yeah so we had this rack of panels in the workshop uh, what's worth showing here <coughs> slicing them up a little micro track work hey I'm cutting those pretty fast a little micro track grading on the outside what else How was the slab done? that was so graded with a bobcat and then basically the small stem wall with two by eights and leveled nicely so it's when you have the, the well-defined 16 by 32 it's quite a bit easier to manage because you're doing a scree board across the edge so it's you can get it quite level nice and level but to show how we put the panels which we were looking for the other day how do you um how do you do the second story here so here we were we we're doing this we're also doing these um <laughs> strips of sill gasket right under the plywood just to reduce noise because this stuff squeaks like you can either glue it or you can we tried this because uh, if you don't glue it it's easier to move things around and you don't get stuck on actually if the plywood gets stuck and you got to lift it off to adjust it and stuff like that so I think that's a, that's a good idea I think we'll probably keep keep working with that um, but let's look at well, do you think do you think that stack, that styrofoam is just a little bit thick? Are there other alternatives of, of material that? No, nah, not not That's thick. It's more like cutting it. What we'd like is like little self-adhesive gasket that's long strips of it that you can just glue down. Because here you have to be careful that the stuff does not slip, does not come off the joist, and it shows, and it's you got to cut it out. Um, so something that's self-adhesive and low cost, like the gasket is good because it's very low cost. Uh, so some kind of an ad adhesive strip, we, we could benefit from finding something like that, that we put it on before, as we prepared the joists. So, so here we were doing this, let's see, some pictures. Yeah, yeah, I mean, um, let's see maybe some pictures of this coming up with the tractor yeah not in this one but I wanted to find one that has tractor pushing things up there morning how about this no still not okay anyway but let's let's going back to uh, current stuff current work but it's kind of good to review that and see that yeah that we're actually doing much better right now 
Um, so here's some of the house wrap work, windows, cutting out the windows. Yeah, naturally we should have taken off the plywood beforehand. Um, but hey, those guys are ripping down our house. What's going on there? They're cutting our cutting our house up. They're trying to break in. <laughs> they found they found the windows to break <laughs> into. <laughs> That's <laughs> great. <laughs> yeah. So here, uh, the door. So what was the procedure for the door? So first we cleaned off the sill a little bit, brought over the window, and we followed the procedure that we read about uh, in the, or we watched in the video. So here we still have this cement board that protects, there's insulation around this, so we put the cement board back on. There was some insulation around the corners, which you had, had to trim a little bit because it was sticking out a little bit. After that, we put on the first layer of this protective material so it's this thick thick gasket material then the flashing corners that was wrong we should which we should put them later so we use the same material uh, to go up the sides so we really got it pretty tight with the sides so now doing the one side uh, stick that on it's a thick rubbery material we kind of buried those corners there we should put them on like like after we put the whole side and we actually did the corners on the upper side as well um, largely because when you put this material up there is like a little crack right there that's just a tiny thing and I think the corner would uh, would seal it up and then we put flashing tape around that so nothing can get in from the top and then we put the door in and everything is good there was a there was a thing that holds the door closed from the top. We didn't notice that, so we had to pry it out. But you should unscrew this thing we, uh, we from should, the top. We, we should have got plumb before we took out that plastic in my mind. Right. So, so actually, there's a procedure. So let's actually. So here we're playing with the door, and it kind of uh, got a little bit off, off on us. It wouldn't close. Then we shifted it. But the idea there is, it's shims. It's you have to shim it very gently. So actually, let's the take a look at that the Hollywood proper procedure for what actors. it would look like to do this properly. Um, so let me uh, actually put on. Oh, I don't have my glasses. Okay. Okay. So specific instructions. So so the first thing I read is take one side, and um, when you install this into a, an aperture, you've got three hinges so the the idea is so that's the door that's the instruction so let's actually take a look at the detail of okay so you prepare prepare your aperture all of that but what do you do to actually start squaring stuff up so they do so here's here's what I see um, you know, there's all the water sealing before the door goes in, but once you put the door in, open the active door and plumb the hinge side of the unit with a six foot level. So open as soon as... So open it, actually open it. Okay. That's step one. So we'll open the door. We didn't really pay attention to the vertical because we kind of thought, oh, okay, it's got a frame, it might be already good. Our sill is pretty good. Okay, so let's do this. Now, second, so there's a note. A door that isn't stored, isn't stored out of plumb is the most common reason for a door unit to leak air or water out of plumb. And maybe that's that's the solution right there. Maybe, maybe we're like off just a little bit on that. So, so I guess we do it uh, in, in both directions. So do it in both directions. Maybe that would have solved everything. Because uh, what we did was we put the six shims around the six hinges thinking that if we put in the closed door, well, um, you have those little uh, space uh, shims behind the hinges. We took out one screw at each hinge and put in a long screw to attach it. We thought, okay, that might be good, but we found out that it actually kind of shifted a little bit. So let's keep, keep reading here. Now it says, place shims 
behind the top hinge. So do one. So take one and fix that one. Uh, okay? So let's do that. So we'll take one, like in, just take, take the upper one, fix one, and tack the unit into place by removing one hinge screw from the top hinge and installing a two and a half inch wood screw through the top hinge and into the rough opening. So that's how you fix it. So two and a half, we were using three inch screws. Note, we recommend the use of screws when installing your pre-hung unit. Screws allow you the opportunity for easy removal if adjustments need to be made to the installation. Well, of course, uh, we typically use screws already. Um, so yeah, you're screwing in through through the hinge. J just took out one, one screw out of the hinge. There's like four or so screws in the hinge. Take out one and screw it in. Okay, next. So what's the next step? So at this point, we've got it vertical, just plumbed. So plumbed, so the warning there is, be careful of out of plumb. So maybe if we read, read that note, we might have uh, even gotten to the first try. Okay, shimming. Moving the door frame as little as possible, carefully close the active door. Place shims behind the middle and lower hinge locations and each of the three corresponding hit hinge locations on the inactive door. So we actually, at this point, once we have one fixed, door closed, put them in, and they say, they place shims behind the middle and lower hinge location. Oh, they put them, they, they have them at the top of the shit. Oh yeah, so they have some at the, the top. top of the middle. So they say figure 14 there. They don't say anything about what's that though, because that's not a hinge. What are they showing there? So let's read on. The one B. Yeah. yeah. So continue adding shims until the margin between the active door and the head jam. Oh, yeah. So what's the head jam? That thing? The long, yeah. the yeah. long the uh, wooded frame top is even, and the margin between the active door and the inactive door, astragal are even. Now what's the astragal? It's, is, is that the thing in between? In between the learn. doors? <laughs> Figure 15. Yeah, so that little crack between the two doors uh, just make it even. Make it, make, look up and down the whole thing, just make sure it's even. Okay, note, an even margin across the top of the header and down the center of the door will ensure that the door unit is square in the opening. Uneven margins will result in the door unit being out of square. So we just gotta check the gap at every every six check inches it. to validate. Yeah, you gotta kinda be careful about it. You check everywhere. So let's see. Top view, jams twisted. Correct with shims. So yeah, and they're sticking the shims behind. So that's the that part here, that's what comes on the door. That's that's the trim that exists on the door. So we're putting the hinges in from behind. Oh, like I guess okay, okay. So uh, twist yeah. the jams. Yeah. The shims okay. are like at the same plane as the top hinges at first, and the yeah. doors are open. And yeah. then you close them, and you do those shims next to the yep. middle hinges. Yeah. Yep. And measure the middle, that middle line where you walk through. And you open the door. Look at the middle line. But look at all the. How do you with, even with what? How do you make sure you just when you say measure it like. Every latitude of the door, every six Yeah, yeah, so this gapping area right here is one of the first key areas we can measure. If this is the same everywhere, it's going to be pretty close on the sides. But what we did is we thought when we jammed it, we were doing this, uh -huh. but we weren't. We were doing this. Oh, yeah. I see. We thought we were, because it's, it a, it's a four and a half inch yeah, opening. I, I think we were like, let's lightly shim it because we thought we were just pushing it too much, right. but we weren't pushing it, we were twisting it. Okay. That could okay. be it, yeah. In other words, we have to make sure there's a shim all the way towards the back. Yeah, it's Exa got, yeah like, exactly. Yeah. It's got to be all so the way... So you're pushing like out, not yeah, not twisting it. But that figure 15 is probably the same, that's it. but that's different it. as the string test they did in the video across the... The post. Yeah, 
And can we do the string test in our case? Hell yeah, we got string already there. Okay. So, know the door, door slabs are heavy during the initial installation. The weight will cause the jams to twist, increasing the margin between the active door and the astragal. Astragal. This twist must be shimmed out to ensure proper 1 8 inch margin between the active door and the astragal. So we want, we're shooting for an eighth inch margin between the active door, okay? Okay, so kind of got that. Five, fastening the hinge side active door frame. Okay, so now, so we were at step four, we're at five. Open the active door carefully and recheck for plumb. Finish screwing the hinge jam into place by removing one screw from the middle and bottom hinges and installing the two and a half inch drywall screw into the hinges at the shim locations and into the rough opening. So basically we're screwing through the door into the rough opening frame, figure 16. Install a second screw into the top hinge. Oh, so they call now for a second screw in the top hinge to prevent the door from sagging. We lift the door up slightly to get that that hinge in. So if we have a problem this way or this way, we do that so it'll square across. If we have gapping, that's a problem on either side. Yeah. Okay. Fastening the inactive door side frame. So now, carefully open the inactive door and recheck for plumb. Make sure the bubble is dead center on the level. Even a slight variation can cause major installation issues. Okay. So just make sure we get that frame perfect with the level. Finish screwing the hinge jam in place by removing one screw from the middle and bottom hinges and installing a longer screw. Add those hinges at the shim locations and into the rough opening. So when you're screwing down, make sure you got the shim pretty much right behind, otherwise you'll warp out the frame because that frame is pretty thin on the door itself. Um, and then it's, they say install a second screw into the top hinge. Okay, so they call for two screws on the top hinge, one, in, one on the other ones to prevent from sagging. So like hold it up so it doesn't sag on you. Okay, so what next? So that, that makes sense. You just gotta, gotta be careful what you do. Fasten the head jam. Close the door unit and recheck the margin around the door unit should be even horizontally across the top of the header and vertically from the header to the soil, to the sill. Make adjustment to the shimming as needed. Well, just keep having that gap pretty uniform, like one eighth inch. Yeah, measure, measure, measure. Place three shims across the head of the door unit. Make sure not to over shim the head of the door unit or it will interfere with the margin across the top of the door. So everything is like, you gotta be very sensitive. Don't like force it in, just lightly in. Open both doors and hold back the weather strip, figure 21. Um, so there's weather stripping, it's that soft stuff. Install one screw into the head and through each of the shim locations. So we are screwing in through, through the top. Screw holes can be filled in for a more finished look. Okay, so you gotta screw in the top as well uh, by the shims. Now, adjusting the frame. If your pre-hung unit has an adjustable sill using, no, that doesn't apply to us. We don't have an adjustable okay. sill. So maybe leave that. Uh, what about install astragal? So Double door. Astragal, it's, the, it's the wooden strip, it's not a gap. Is that what else is well, we do not have one. We have two doors closing right against each other. So, oh, so it is the space of the space. Yeah, so we don't have nine. Um, installing the lock set. Okay, so that's next step. So, so, um, so basically up to seven, fasten the head jam because the rest is for adjustable jam and astragal, which we don't have. They close right to each other. No, nothing in between there. The astragal is it considered that uh, blocking hole? No, it's, it's, it's a Oh, it's the other guy. It's like a middle, okay. a middle divider, which we don't have. For the purpose of, if you want to put in large, 
use the door for large things that go in, inside the house. All right, so what's the brief review of this? Check for level and plumb every single time you put in a screw, right? And we're gonna have to check those gappings every time we put in new screws because any one of those screws could change it, right? Start with the one, the upper right. Yeah. Upper right, one. upper right. Get that one. After we get that one in, we were... I think we do have an astral action. I don't know if that makes a difference or not, but... Let's see, what's it say? In this picture, they show Astrogal being on the door itself. Yeah, it's that little plate that, or that little flap that keeps the air out of the gap, I think. Yeah, but the, we don't install it because it's already there. There's nothing else. Yeah, it, there was some measurements referencing the Astrogal, so... But this is a general instruction set, so it does okay. not necessarily apply to, to so, every door. Okay. I yeah. believe the Astrogal is attached to the door. It's that. It's that little flap that you... It is, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it, it, yeah, it's attached yeah. to the door in our case, so it is not a uh, so we don't a have fixed to position it. component. Yeah. Okay. okay. So to review, you got the one screw. What do you do then? Do you check for plumb? Check for plumb. We already had the door open uh, in order to install the first thing, so we close it, right? So this uh, we should do. We should do like step uh, file, make a copy. Let's do. Let's just do like step one through. S Wait a second, wait a second. That document, is it necessary to replicate? I would just put that document in its all beauty. Yeah, uh, yeah, we can. But it's like, if you try to, I'm so just saying, like, if you try to read this, okay, there's, there's a whole bunch of things here. Um, yeah, okay. It helps to say, okay, just a sh short summary, which would say, so, top right hinge, Is fixed. And then use shims. And then I think measure, measure, measure that's everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, so we don't have to really say that. And not over tighten screws either and risk moving it about, right? Exactly, so exactly. Shims are thin, the, wall, the drills are powerful, and just like the shims, we probably need to do that lightly. Check everything, and then maybe with the final screws is where yeah. you're, you know, you're fixing that for sags. Yeah. So. No, they're there. They're already there. Yeah. Okay. So we did. We did this. So we did E. So F. So we E and F is. Do the top right, install the shims, um, right? Yeah, I mean, install it, put the shims in there, cool. Now shimming, so you close it. So close it and do the middle two. Close door, do bottom two hinges so once again shims one screw but plumb. I, I, I really think you need to really drive this every other the first step and every other step should be check plumb level and gaps next step check plumb level and gaps next step check plumb level and gaps yeah. uh, after every single step to make sure we really drive this that it is critical that after every change variable new variable is introduced that the, the initial component is checked against again in order to prevent having to go back several steps. Yeah, beautiful. So we did the bottom two hinges, keep shimming. Um, make sure that, so here is 
and then also they say <coughs> check the spacing check spacing between two doors the gaps so it's, you can say around frame check spacing between the two doors that's what they emphasize here um, yeah and between the door and the top or in the beginning of the frame as well yeah Man, that's a lot of, that's a lot of checking okay so fastening the hinge side active door frame so now you're opening it again so basically in this step well do what's it mean to do the bottom two hinges when it's closed you can only shim it shim this is just shim mm -hmm. so not do just shim now open door yeah. Fasten it. Yeah, very, yeah, very. Because that's where the screws are exposed. Only when the door is open. Without pulling frame, you know that that's that's so critical that uh, like the shims, they're not meant to push. They're not meant to do anything except fill space in the area that there is not anything else. Right? They're not meant to push the door. They're not meant to pull the door. I, I thought shims were a very different component from they were. They're just meant to fill that space and provide you a screw area location to, to, to um, go through. So uh, we did the bottom two hinges. Now at that time, do we close the door again or do we go right up to add the second screw? Might as well. Check level tone <laughs> and you gaps. Check level tone and you gaps. Install a second screw, yes, right there. So install, so open it, fasten it to frame, and add second screw. Where is the entry into this? At the top. Box? Yeah, let's share that. Yeah, I'll, I'll uh, have it pulled up on the side as well. Oh, in chat, yeah. Chat. I'm going to put that to my log too. So actually, there's another. You know, that first stairs. Door is open, correct? Uh, it should say that. So. Summary. I was going to put it there. So whenever you're closing the door, you're shimming. When you open the door, you're fastening. You're fastening. Yeah. yeah. So this this we already have here. So now for this other side, pretty much. I mean, it was pretty much repeat procedure, right? Mm-hmm. Kind of repeat, or should we write that out well, the, fully? The, yeah. The thing about the preventing of the sagging, we were perfect. Open level. and I mean, we were door. so perfectly level. It was ridiculous. But we weren't. There's something about how the outside and the inside yeah. um, I would say close yeah, and check. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, so let's make sure this is... Oh yeah, let's do... Everyone edits. So anyone can edit this. Um, so open an active door. Uh, repeat, pretty much. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. I think that's. Let's see if we have any new info. So, so inactive door. Inactive door.
Were the shims thick enough on your side to do the light, the, the gentle push in? They're thick enough to, yeah. to fill up the space? Okay. Yeah, they're, they're good enough. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, I think this could. That's the deal. So we can put a link to dock. What was your question? Should I put affix, A-F-F-I-X, or with door open, affix top right hinge, or is fix understood by people to know that and stuff? Yeah, that's affix. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that's the summary right there. Just take a picture of that on the phone. How many times? <laughs> how many times are we going to go cycle through this until we get it right? I don't as know. As many as we need. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> um, in case we do this really fast and mm -hmm. there's daylight left, let's do some stairs. <laughs> so let's talk about the stairs. <laughs> this might. <laughs> no, we should get. We should get this within an hour or so. Yeah. Then an then hour. Then. No more. Sure. Because we're we're like really good. <laughs> yes. I, we are. I mean, I honestly feel much better now about... Yeah, I mean, there's a very explicit procedure just like yeah. for anything. You'd think... <laughs> well, I mean, if this thing had that, like a super solid frame, then you just put it in and maybe it just goes right in. But it doesn't. It just has this little weak thing around yeah. the outside. So you really got to know what you're doing. Okay, so manufacturer instructions. Okay, stair design guide. So now we're moving right on to stairs. Uh, once again, if you want to review what the, what the requirements are... One of the main requirements is max. They don't state a minimum for stair stair height, but they do say a max, which is seven and three quarters. You can have tiny stairs, but that would take you forever to climb up the second story. So that's kind of self-enforcing um, that you would have a certain rise per stair. Uh, minimum of 10 inches. If you have nosing, they actually specify that you have to have a minimum of three quarter inches of nosing. It's like when your foot kicks in, like under, you don't want to trip over it when you lift your foot. So it's actually, there's safety issues there. And that, that's why the code actually specifies these things. Uh, we have the stringer in this case, but we're not doing this. We're going to a simpler version, which is more like in this picture down here. FreeCAD has a, a stair. stair designer already. Um, now tip, that's actually generate. Oh, it makes one of those things? Yeah, but it would not necessarily do for us. If you wanted to design our stair, it doesn't have enough detail like the nosing and all those other details. It's not there yet, but yeah, you can do general stairs. Um, so now let's go to, to the actual stair design in a FreeCAD file. That's better. So we do have this. Uh, you can download. This is actually a good detailed design file. You can open that up. If you go into FreeCAD, but the real thing is how you actually fit this thing in the house. So the concept. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, it shows you the, the main things. It actually shows you, I think, the right <laughs> dimensions. But that's this is what we're doing. We have the freedom to make these steps. And actually, if you mess up, you can adjust them. If they're like not the correct spacing, move it over a little bit. So it's actually quite builder friendly in terms of what you do. So what's the what's the stair with like some there's some things we have to pay attention to. And that is 42 and an eighth. I can take a screenshot of that because that's an important dimension so we're cutting our uh, 2 by 12s to 42 I'm sorry, and an eighth 
in the email can you go into the email I'll paste it into the chat as well but I'm, I'm going just off the email here day 11 the day 11 email yep oh, okay I'll find it there and there's also actually we talked about this Actually, did this here. I think I'm the only one who's having trouble finding the stuff, so I just need no, no. to help me. Here's the <coughs> here's the direct link on that on a doc, so we can quit out of that. This is what we have an actual FreeCAD file. This is actually pulled this off today. Oh, That's let's start to the platform. Uh, yeah, so we do start with a platform. You can look at the FreeCAD file here. So this is day 18, I believe I linked to a stair on my log, I think I got stairs. See, so you go home to stairs. So this links back to here. Right, so the FreeCAD file is here. And the FreeCAD position file, that's that's in the main seed home to CAD. We, we kind of went through this exhaustively, but it's in a CAD here. The master well, file that we're talking just, about. I just, need a, I just need someone to help me after lecture because I. Click on it. You've gone through it already. Click on the thing. I just never, I haven't been able to figure it out. So I'll just talk to someone after. Please. So this is actually the first floor where the stairs are positioned correctly. So let's actually put that position file means like where does it lie within the whole house? So if you click on that, download this first floor. So now let's open up the first floor because here we've got this extracted staircase. But here we've got the house where it lays and so you can actually correlate to everything. So that's, um, okay, so let's hide the carport. Let's hide some walls here. So there we are, we can peek under here. That's where that is. So this platform here, which uh, we could do first, but uh, the stairs themselves start here. Um, we set 42 and an eighth for the width, that's a critical dimension. Do we still have it here? We got it like 40, 42. What's the thickness of the wood right there, yeah? What's the thickness of the wood um, on the, uh, not this, I, I don't know what the word the is. Landing? Right. The landing is here, that's a two by six, and then one by four, the top. Uh, the, uh, the, this, 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 this part one? of this there. The, the kick. Yeah, yeah, the kick green. Board. Oh, the kick. Okay, the kick. That's, uh, that's actually three eighths. Three eighths, okay. Now, so what's, what's at the site right now? We've got walls like this. We've got these back walls. Before we install the stairs, we need to put on these few panels. Insulation and, and interior well, wall. Well, walls are already there. The only thing that's missing is the interior panel. Is so... It, is it plywood? It's the interior plywood. It's a pile of that inside the house. Yeah, the white painted stuff. The white, yeah, okay. Yeah. Is there insulation ava available for those uh, walls? It's already in there. Oh, okay. Cool. Well, can they come in size? The plywood? Four by eight. Yeah, so we hang it starting at the top. So we want to hang it up all the way to the ceiling. And it will end up, it, it should actually end up on these little blockings, which we did in the last version. All right, so, and then electrical is underneath. Yep. So what's the difference between the current model? We don't have that blocking mm -hmm. because we're going to use battens and just fix the plywood to battens. So we don't have to worry about blocking at this level. Um, so we've got all the structure in the house 
we need to add the panels, the actual interior panels. Because the stairs are in between that, you, you don't attach the stairs to the framing because then you have to cut out the panels all around the stairs. That will be a hard job and a lot of gaps. So you put in the panels first so that the stairs, all the stair treads go right in between them and that's a finished... But it is critical finished. that we get the, um, ad, uh, the adherence into the two buys rather than into just the panels though. For those yes, areas exactly. Solid. For the structure of this where you're walking up in this for many years you're screwing in these long members into the framing it's not just the plywood use long screws and they have to go into the, these framing members not just in between the plywood's not going to hold much you kind of got to mark there's a 16 inch on center for the panels. Will we be able? To, we'll be able to see underneath it though, where the the wood's going. You can right? see okay. it's yeah. Everything is transparent. Like here, when we're so we put in the panels on the inside of these vertical ones and on the back walls, and now we can ins ins insert the stairs. What we should probably do is we should take the two by twelves out there and cut on site because that will be determined exactly by how much we end up um, as far as that spacing. It should be the CAD says like forty two. <laughs> uh, well, depends how accurate people were. So we probably should cut it, just measure it and cut it. You could have like a tiny gap in there, but it should fit pretty much right in. So cut it to pretty exact space. Yeah, I mean, you could probably assume that we might get away with like if we measure right between the top, you know, the opening right on top everywhere. It might be really cool that we just do one measurement. That's it. Ideally, we should do that. Ideally, it should be within like, you know, like an eighth or. Yeah. Um, otherwise, you've got that little gap. And what are we doing to to trim up that gap? I mean, we don't have any provisions for that. So the stairs go right next to the wall, and that's it. So uh, we got to make them pretty accurate. Um, what I would suggest is we bring the wood up there and bring out the saws, so we cut it in place and take the measurement after we install the interior plywood. And then go up. Can we use Jeff's stairs. Dewalt miter that's right down the road? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, we should take a couple of them down. If, if depending on how many people are there, but we could have a couple of people <laughs> cutting once we once we got this going. Now we've got the double rungs because we have nothing supporting in between. There's nothing, no support in between. So it's a almost a four foot span. For that, the code says you got to use like a four by equivalent. The, the two, two by equivalent, it will work, but after a few years, it will start crumbling on you. So double, that's like lifetime, more lifetime design. Uh, so the good thing is after we cut these, these pieces, um, these are, how long are these? Thirty-two. We said thirty-two so that everywhere they will hang across two vertical studs two vertical, yeah. so that's kind of 32 allows us just just do that 32 is fine okay. so we don't have to measure two by sixes, two by sixes there as well. two by fours two by fours those are two by fours these are two by twelves here sorry two by six right here the rest are two by uh, two by twelve the kicker board we don't need to do that yet because uh, we can install that easily right after because uh, it actually attaches from the back and from the front. Did you get more wood for stairs? Do we have the wood? Well, we have a bunch in the in the old pile. If we don't have enough yeah, here, that should. Be. Oh yeah, maybe. And also the. We don't need. So we don't need to do this. We need two by fours and two by twelves to in a, in order to get structural stairs. The kickboard. We don't need that. That we can cut out of the, but it the helps, siding no? plywood. Doesn't help. What does it help right now? It. Uh, you alignment. Yeah, with the stairs and the steps. Because there's nothing connecting these. These are just hanging in the air as they are in the... In the well, you, no, no, you got these panels here. So, let's see which wall is that. Oh, yeah, I know there's a module in front of it, absolutely. But then you it's need markings out. on the module. Yeah, you got it. That's all got to be carefully yeah. marked there. Mm -hmm. And you got to well, yeah, it in. should be easy to make two measurements that are level to each other, make a line, and that's where the board goes. Yeah, are you suggesting that we install the kickboard as a way to measure how far up we go? 
but okay, so here's the deal on that. Take measurements on the wall model. So there's a reason why there's a tiny gap there. That's just adjustment. But the idea is, if you use this to get your rise here, you can because you have to end up. The last step has to end up exactly at the second floor level. So this that would be really hard to do. You do so you, so you measure every position and then make sure it ends that's up. it. Yeah. And you end up at the top. And that measurement, I mean, you can get off the CAD. It says, okay, we got the floor. That's amazing. But you can, can you can, can get those. We can use the bottom platform to adjust, right? If we, if we end up a little over. We don't have to do the bottom platform right now. That's another build. I would say let's focus on the stairs. And for the first stair, you can attach the back. The only attachment where you, which you don't have is here. Put a two by six under. Put a six by six. Let's get that stub of six by six we have on the site. Just put it under, lay it on there. That's finished detail. Let's not worry about that right now. Let's get the stairs. There, there's a lot of, I mean, there's a bunch of detail here because you got to cut off, cut your, we'll probably use one by fours to finish off this side. But right now this side is exposed here. It's hidden behind the walls. That's good. Uh, but for now, we can attach here. And then the only question is, how are we attaching this? Just put a two by six, six by six stump. You know, like those cutoffs from the six by six columns we have out there. And they'll get you like almost there. You probably like a two by will get you the rest or something like that. So just get it at the right height. Here you can attach it. So the critical parts are what are all these heights, the rises, mm -hmm. and that number there is uh, seven, looks like seven and three quarter. Let's get a better, better About measurement. Eight. It's to there. Oh, well, that's exactly oh, it's reference. You have a model, seven point five. Yeah, it's really good. So it's about seven point five. But so yeah, okay. So you measure every seven point five. You keep going up. At the end, so whatever you measure up to, this last. Oh yeah. So check this out. The last step is a no step. The last step is the second story platform. So if you, uh, let's see, if you can see there, the last step is the second story platform. So it has to end up exactly there. So that's, um, I don't know, what's that detail look like there? Well, anyway, we know that this thing has to rise. This thing has to be the top surface here has to be 7.5 below the top step so are we 7.5 for real everywhere for every rise well let's maybe measure this one here from this surface to that no what's going on 7.75 okay uh, do you remember 7.75 from the dock that's the max rise so we're actually using the max rise feature so we are using 7.75, which means that this first step is actually not regular. Okay. It's just a little bit above, which is allowed. The first step can be non-regular. Everything else has to be regular, including the last step, because that's... But when you do this platform like this, the first one, there is no requirement for that. The first one can be off. It is. So now, okay, do we have, for real, 7.5 everywhere? That would be a good question to ask. Um, let's take a look at, it better be, I mean, <laughs> so from here to there, seven and three quarters, yes. So we're rising seven and three quarters everywhere, which means that, what's the deal? Like the bottom of this, so tell me this guys, the bottom of this thing right there to there, what should that be? That sh that's the rise, right? Same thing? Yeah. Uh, yeah, let's measure that. So you got the 7.75 uh, everywhere. So that's what we need to do. 7 3 quarters, except for the bottom, which is 7 and a half. Off the, flo off the ground, the concrete. So that's where we're at. Um, the measurement of the 
the treads will get it off the real sight. We've got 32 for the length. Um, so let's just take a screenshot of that. Um, Katarina, uh, I've seen floating stairs where there's not a kick. Is we that could a do specialized that. Uh, build or is that something that, is that kick absolutely code? I, I know that you had, I've seen... The kick is not I don't think that's anything. required. Right. I don't okay. think the kickboard is required. It's, it's just there for neatness underneath. Well, it is good for dirt being thrown down into that closet space there <laughs> if you're kicking yeah, yeah, dirt yeah, down yeah, there all sure. the time also so, if somebody was in underneath the stairs and they were like trying to grab you yeah it's good for that too if you have little gremlins in your house <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. gremlins are the worst <laughs> so here we can put that critical dimension there well if you can see it but it's 32 inches so let's well here we have this I'm, I'm sorry yeah, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah no, I, I, um, I, I missed that last part. What was it that I couldn't understand? Something about stairs without something. The kick. I was just asking. Uh, I've seen designs oh. where there is no kick, but it, it makes sense that it's, uh, it's, it's more of a aesthetic as well as a practical kick rather than uh, something that is for viewing. Right, right. Well, to be honest, aesthetically, I prefer them without the kick. Like in our house, they were originally designed without, they were built without it. Right. Uh, and it looks really spe pretty because if you have the light from overhead, then it projects all of these shadows down mm -hmm. uh, below the stairs. Uh, but in the case of Rosebud, because it's like a tiny, it's a small house, um, we want to make the, the under stairs usable. And so... First of all, without that, you'd see all the mess inside your closet, which is going to be below the stairs. Right? There's going to be a closet there. Um, and then what we found is that, like, as you walk up the stairs, you just kick dust down. So yeah. basically, yeah, you make the sense, yeah. whatever is below it unusable. Yeah. But so I agree with you. They look really right? beautiful without it. No, it's not required. Right. Okay. I mean, as far as I know, I don't think so. I've never seen that it was required. No. Right. <laughs> Okay, cool, thank you. Okay, sure. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, I was trying to get my headphones on and all of that. 32 inch 2x4 supports. Uh, 7 point, so critical numbers. 7.5 inch rise. No, 7.75. Um, 7.5 on the first step. Eric would prefer you go to the thousand. Yeah, or the million, if <laughs> possible. So those are the important numbers, and then measure width in place. Width. In place. So that we have a good fit. Yeah. So where's that first step go in relation to the opening? Yeah. That's a good question there. And that number there is you can back that out if you know the number of steps. Right. Yeah, and we can um, there's fifteen steps. And we can measure that actually. Let's get it right off out of the CAD. So we've got the, the side profile here. The wall is right here. So we're going to assume that the CAD is right. If it's not, well, we'll, we'll be able to measure it out there. But the CAD tells us we are from there to there. Did I do it? No, that's a, that's a weird measurement there. Uh, we're going from that edge to this edge. Did that do it? Uh, 41 inches to the actual kickboard. From the beginning of the landing. But that's without the siding, the interior siding. 
or the kick kick thing so it would be according to this 41 and three quarters because those are three eighths for both of those so if we talk about this is this one here is what you mount first you want a reference point Floor, the floor, right? Well, because look at it. Yeah. Look at that. We ha we do have a reference there. Uh, the first module. So it starts right after exactly after four feet. There you go. That's the first module. There's a there's the adjustment gap which we that's in a CAD. So this is the first module, four feet exactly from the edge of the corner, and your stairs start right at it according to CAD. Uh, Perfect. Oh, okay, so uh, let's uh, note that stairs start right at four feet if, if from the outer framing. So you, you can only measure from inside, but the walls are exposed. You see where the wall ends. So you're not on, that. you're not on two studs. That's fine. You attach it to these back. Okay. Two. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. So you attach to this stud and that stud okay. for the one that's back there. Perfect. Okay, so that's actually easy. We can locate that. Let's take a screenshot of that. So we can say uh, slide, duplicate slide, stair start. exactly at end of 1b1 if we use our nomenclature that was module 1b1 right that's what we called it That's a full length module, the, that um, 1B1 is this, and the start is there at the end of it. And that's for, for what? For the 2x4 support, and for, yeah. Okay. So we know that. Do we have a specific and what's that height there? Yeah. What is that height of that support from the floor? Se it looks like seven, seven, uh, seven and point. Seven and two one point quarter. Seven point five. Five. Seven point five. So it's it's noted here. Seven, seven point five. So these two numbers are the most critical. This is an editable doc, you can edit. 7.5 rise from before. So I'm gonna draw a little arrow there. So we got there. To that corner from the floor to the to the corner of the first support so we can locate that exactly wow that'd be great now as far as the both treads treads let's not put two treads on first let's just get the first tread and also another there's another reason for it if we like at this stage i think we want to keep the second tread on top off because we're going to be walking up it and with dirty shoes for a bunch of time so we'd have to sand it and clean it up at the end so maybe keep the second one off and just do the first one. It will still be structural and you can walk up there. 
but um, really thinking about how you finish this off, I would put the second tread at the very end after where pretty much interior finish is done. Otherwise, people walking up and down it, dropping things on it, that would just we'd have to basically sand them afterwards. So let's avoid that and put on only one. So we only need to cut 15, not 30. But we, sh we should cut the 30, but install the 15 for now. Otherwise, you can actually flip it upside down. That's another strategy. But then you'll have a hole. You'll have holes from screws in it. Because these are going to be attached by screws to the one from the bottom. So you don't see the holes at the top. So from the bottom, you can attach. Uh, Using like two and a half inch screws. The, the two by twelve steps. Two by twelve, the second, second, uh, second layer. Yeah. Um, so that's that. Well, that's plenty for the doors and stairs. Um, yeah. Now that's pretty cool. Like we've got this in CAD already, and we did that collaboratively actually. So in fact. The guy who actually did the final stair, he wasn't even on site. So that's that's an example of how collaboration works. You can have people who get oriented in the matter and they understand, okay, you gotta upload files to the wiki, this is how we store things. So you can do collaborative design for a transparent and inclusive economy of abundance if you know if people know the, the skill set of how you collaborate and how you use FreeCAD and so the, forth. The this one dude off remote participation. Yeah, he's on Discord. Who was it? Coder Jeff on Discord. Thanks, Coder Jeff. He, I don't think he knows about the morning sessions. We should. Oh. Uh, yeah. So that's cool. That's Discord that's good. Thing. That's how it should work. That uh, ideally, really all kinds of contributions uh, come in. Uh, it's like so, a group or something. Yeah, do people kind of have a rough idea of the stairs? Okay. So what do we do on the stairs to summarize? What's our first step? No pun intended. Put up the <laughs> wall panels. <laughs> wall Measure. panels. Wall panels. Second step. Measure. Measure. Measure what? Measure the the start point. Yeah. You yeah. can start cutting. We know we got to cut 32s for the two yeah. by fours. Just cut a bunch of those. How many? At least 30. 30. 30. There's 15 treads. So cut 30. Yeah. Let's look at that cat file. Do are we actually at at 15 or? Is the last one the 15? No, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. The, the 15th is the last one, so we don't count, so it's only 14. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 14. So that's a correction, 14. So 14 of the 2x12s, 28 total. Uh, 28 total of the 2x4s. That's it, just two parts, man. That's awesome. <laughs> Two parts, treads and uh, the hangers, the, the supports. Uh, we should make the landing too, right? The what? The landing. No landing. No landing. Uh, that's going to be another job. Let's let's get through this first. Yep. Uh, Just keep so up. yes, mar gap. one team can actually mark. Well, install the panels because you got to install the panels first because only after that can you mark. Otherwise, your marks are hidden. Mm -hmm. So install panels, do markings, but we can cut the uh, two by fours right now so let's do that yeah and i'm willing to w mark the whole damn stairs on the panels you know what i mean every everywhere where they're supposed to be the two by twelves and then the, the thing mark it all along the wall and we'll have a direct map as we go up and we'll also be able to find out if we're off by a little bit in the yeah 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 um Start with making all the height measurements, make sure yeah, that fits. Every, every single one of them, so, so we can measure through, so it's just an exact, if it's not lining up, there's something wrong. Yeah. Let's talk about some quality control points, like how do you know you're do going right? Because you don't want to go and measure the whole thing and find, oh, I'm off by half an inch, and then redo the whole thing. So one thing we can extract from this, this CAD here is also, what is the, the distance between each, like the, horizontal distance between each um, so how would we get that let's measure what exactly is a run so between say here well let's look at it from the side so the distance um, 
between this line and that line so in other words how far back are you going every time because that will tell us by where where the hole actually starts whether we're right on that so that measurement would be let's say from about there to there let's see let's get rid of all these measurements here with a, with a uh, template block help? It wouldn't be definitely the only measurement, but it might be a good check. Um, yeah, possibly a template what yeah, might definitely. be an idea. Right so I'm measuring that distance there, 10 and a half. In other words, right, that's the distance of 10 and a half. In other words, from, let's verify that. So from here to about you know, going down straight here. Do we get a ten and a half? Yeah, it's about ten and a half. So ten and a half times fourteen. Does that get us the right numbers? We can measure in, in sight. So ten and a half. That's a verification point for how if we're doing well in terms of horizontal travel, and then seven point five times 14 plus, sorry, 7.75 times 14, we're doing that 14 times, plus the first step, which is 7.5, does that give us the exact height from the floor to the second? So let's write that down. Those are two critical verification points that will prevent us from having to mark everything twice. So let's, let's just record that. Um, so, QC. Rise equals, no, no, so I mis misspoke there, 7.75 rise, except first stair, first step. So QC rise equals times how many? 7.75 times how many? 14. Times 14 plus 7.5. Mm -hmm. This should equal height from concrete to second story surface. I'm actually going to add uh, minus 0 0.25. Where's that 0 0.25 coming from? That's our finished floor. That's our. We're doing this plank floor that's quarter inch. So the actual floor is going to be a quarter inch above the subfloor, and that's where we're going to step onto. So this total rise, well, seven plus seven five plus uh, so that rise no Do what am I doing here um, we want the stair to, to end at the same the, the top of the stairs the, uh, the and that floor before good. we add the, the, the top floor and then the top floor would go over that, that stair tread but you got to step up to it, so you have to consider it as that's equal to this, all the st stairs. So, actually, the last. Well, it would be 7.75 minus that point. Okay. No, th I think this is right. So, we're stepping up 14 steps, but the last step rise is actually going to be a quarter inch under because there's a finished floor there. In other words, to show it in the CAD, yeah, it's oh, yes. little details here. Um, so it kind of matches the first there then, right? If it's a quarter inch off, then it's 7575, 75, 75 on the bottom, 75 on top. Is that right? Well, um, idea there is, so if you've got, we hit the second floor. Why is the 
175. So here's the. Um, that, it's just a special stair in the bottom uh, with a platform mechanism. All right, all right. So what do we got here? If you look at the side detail. So that's the actual floor surface, but there's a quarter inch finished floor at the top. In other words, this gap here plus a quarter inches should be three inches or should be 1.5. Oh, let's see, let's see. What do we have from this end to here? 2.25. Yeah, there's a little inconsistency there, man. There's 2.25. Um, If that were the last 2.25, 2.5. So if you see where this this thing ends, it ends below the top tread. In other words, from here we should have 1.5, and we have 0.75 extra. In other words, huh, the last step is going to be an inch taller, according to this design. See it? This gets Does that push us out of code? Katrina? 2.25 divided by 15 is 0.15, which is almost a 16th. Yeah, it's like a little, little extra. We'd have to rise per. So in order to correct that, so we have 2.25 right now which is three quarters. So basically this calculation here has been done without the subfloor. Uh, they thought that the uh, subfloor is where we end up. Yep. Uh, I'm sorry, what was that? That is a three quarters inch of the subfloor? So it turns out in our CAD that we have a one inch extra rise on the last step. Is that acceptable? No, right? Okay. No, uh, what we have on the first, can we transfer that one inch to the first? Oh yeah, there we go. So on the first one, we have 7.5, but there's the oh, landing there. Oh yeah, we there. can put it there. Let's see, on the first one, what do we have there? What's the height of Right, so the question is, what's this first rise here? And we have... No, that didn't do that right. First mm. rise is going to be... Oh, so first rise is actually 7.9. It's like 8, so it's actually... Oh, wow, well, that's already above. It's already above. So we got, now that we're looking into the details, because we're actually building it, we see some inconsistencies. So what's the best thing to yeah. do? What we should probably do is raise, can we just raise this, mm -hmm. the platform? platform just the raise platform. the platform. Because the platform right now... Yeah, but is the platform, what is the height of the platform right now? Right now the height of the platform is six and a quarter. So we can raise oh, the platform. Oh, okay. Yeah, Go for go for go to a two by eight. Yep. Two by eight is seven point two five, right? Plus three quarter, but the get, that yep. gets us to eight. Can we do eight on a first on a platform? Seven point seven seven okay, five is the official. I stair thing. I I think right. No, I think so because Wait, I think why that not that's just another four right. platform that leads up to the platform. You can, that's extra. Uh, you don't have room in front of the door though, because oh, the door okay. is right there. Yeah. That's what I, I think uh, a platform like that, so code is 7.75, we're at 8. Uh, I don't know, do platforms like that have specifications by code? Because that's not a stair, it's a platform. I have not seen it. So right, I have not okay. seen in the, so let's I mean, in, the, to, uh, in the code, they specify the width and length of landings, but I've not seen that they would specify like that platform. So let let me okay. So let me be clear about this. So um, you basically dividing like what is the total height of the 
fr from ceiling to subfloor, from from uh, concrete uh, slab to subfloor. Was the total height there? It's, uh, was it 121 something? Let's uh, forget that number, but so fr so that what's would be the, the distance. What's the height here. of the Yeah. Well, to the top of the. The subfloor, right. No, let's go here. From here to there. No, that didn't 200. Go. No, no, no. Here, let's let's do this. One twenty-one and seven eighths. Okay, one twenty-one and uh, one twenty-one point eight seven five. And the, the maximum riser is seven and a half? They're all 7.75. Oh, it's three quarters? Okay. Oh wait, that's below. We need to add one, one and a half inches to that. So it's... Yeah, I didn't get the right measurement. The right measurement would be from... Here? That <laughs> you know so the height of a module. Plus eight. A module is one is one oh seven. A module, a module is one oh seven and five eight. Uh yeah, yeah. One oh seven and five okay. eight plus twelve inches for the right. Okay, plus 1.5, 1 .5, which is, which is the sill plate. Oh yeah, there's a sill plate. Plus uh, 12, 12 inches for the sub floor. That's, that's 121 and 1 one eighth. Eight. Oh, oh, plus, plus, the, plus, plus the top plate. plate plus 1.5. 1 122 1 and uh, 5, 5 eighths. Plus a okay. quarter for the and floor. Then we hold, take on, hold on, quarter for uh -huh. the floor. Quarter for the finished floor. Okay. No, I no, already, already included, included that, that in 12. 12. I, did I did 12, 12 for, for the floor. floor. Oh, that's subfloor. Right, right but, but 12, 12 inches, inches is the, to the totality of the floor with, with the subfloor. Sub but you need the floor a quarter inch. Oh, oh you, you mean, mean the, the, the finished floor. floor. Okay. 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 Okay, okay, so, so 122 20 and 7 eighths, right? right? And, and then, then we, we take off for, for the platform, platform if we, if we were to keep the plan, it will be six, six, five, five, six, six and a quarter, quarter, right? Total. Yeah, okay. Well, it will be uh, five and a half. We should measure it in place because we could be talking about all kinds of things right now. Right, yeah. let's just, let, right, right. Let's, let's just, let's just get, get a sense, sense of the general, general whether we're missing a step or not, right? So we have now, we took off that time 116 and 5 eighths divided by 7 and 3 quarters, right? And that tells us that we should have 15 steps, 0 0.04. Minus the last one where the last step is the second story platform. Maybe. Right. So, so if, if we, we were, were to, to do 7.75 7 times, times 14, we get 108.5. Oh, no, 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 Right. Yes. yes. According to this, the last step, step would be eight inches and a quarter, in an eighth. eighth. So, so it's, it's what, what we're talking about. about. We, we're, we're short. short we're short, too long, an short, inch and, and something. something. Yeah. Okay. okay. The only solution I see for this is to uh, increase the platform. Sure. Just do it. Um, do that. Assume we have a two by eight. 
which is 7.25 yep. plus three quarters for the three quarters. one by. So it's eight. So we start at eight, and then we have solved where we put the first stair support because we place it right on it. Then I think, or maybe not. No, maybe I don't know. But um, yeah, this is like we we have to solve. We have to like one person has to sit down and just get that number exactly. But we should also do it exactly from the house itself because it, there might be some discrepancies there. So and we should go. Yeah, we can do right. that. We, we should go to the house and um, basically divide. If you have eight inches up the wall, divide that distance by fourteen and see if we get an acceptable number. So let's measure it off the house and divide by fourteen because okay. we got fourteen steps. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm doing, doing that, that right, right now, now and I, I think, think it's, it's correct. correct. I mean, I'm, I'm getting, getting 7.7589, 7 so it, so it might be like, just, just like a smidgen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean the, the, yeah, the, the, the best, best approach, approach right, is to be to... I mean, stairs are hard. hard. Um, well, so we, we're going to assume we got a 2 by 8 platform. We're going to measure what, yeah. the, what the distance is to the top. But remember to add a quarter right. because the finished floor. That's all. And then you divide know, by four. Right. You, know what, you know what I will yeah. do? Just, I mean, the calculations are hard and the CAD is difficult. What I would do would be to, on the wall itself, draw a line and then use pieces of tape to mark each step. So you can move the pieces of tape. Sticky pads. Sticky you have like, like, like a storm stick. stick kind of situation okay. where you basically Let's have a, a the, uh, that, that marks all the lines. The sticky pads, they're good tape. No, they don't stick from the wood. Yeah. Right? And that way you, you can keep adjusting them until they're all even. Okay. That's cool. And do it on a single line first. Don't bother with doing the length. Just do the line. Like you mean vertical up? Like a chalk line? Yeah, just one vertical line. And then, and then once, once you ha you have that okay. settled, then you can start drawing the horizontal. Yeah. Okay. Like like a, a fish bone kind of situation. Yeah, but that, that's going to be about transparent because if you okay. take the height and divide by fourteen, you got to be at the right place. So, yeah, we should verify. Yep. Right. All right. Okay. Well, well divided by fourteen. No. Right. right. Exactly. exactly. Right. Well, well divided by, by 15, 15 because, because the last step is, the, you know, so that's where it gets confusing is when we do, you have to add the last one. one. If, if you, you take, take the, the full height, the last step counts, so it's 15. No, it's going to be 14 actually. Watch. But if you think it's 15, she, didn't she say it's 14 you, rises. Last, Isn't it 14 uh, rises? So here we've got one rise, two rise, three, are, four, five, six, seven, yes, eight, nine, yeah, four, ten. Steps. 13, 14, 14 rises. No, there are 15 rises. But there are 15. There are 15, 15 rises steps, and 14 15 steps. Rises. Okay, right. so that number would be right. 15. Okay. 15 rises. 15, okay. Rises. 15 rises, rises, 14 steps. Okay. 14 actual steps because the platform yeah. is the last step. Oh, okay. So it's really 15. Right. Okay. Right. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So we make a note. Um, 15 rises, 14 treads, and that's after the landing. So landing, <clears throat> uh, corrected to 2 by 8, plus the 1 by, one by 4 planks, equals 8 inch height. Two by eights are seven point two five. Yep. All right. Oh, they're seven point two five. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's we got this confusing system. Oh yeah. So what do we see? Say for the QC of the rise, seven point seven five times fifteen. Plus, and now we say eight inches because the platform is eight. Something like that 
should equal to to the height from the concrete to the second story surface plus another quarter for the finished floor. And that mm -hmm. we'll see if language to be super clear about the what surface that actually is the top because it's the top of the subfloor as it stands now before the final touch. So there's got to be some terms. I'm gonna try to figure that out. Subfloor, finish floor. From concrete to second story, it's actually to top of subfloor yeah. plus 0 0.25, that's finished floor. And that's what we've got there. Maybe second story subfloor? Are you okay. That's what we got. Uh, but this rise now here, get rid of that because we have. Uh, I guess we got to correct. That needs correction here, so we'll still make it rise at the four foot mark at the end of the panel. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, oh yeah, question. Does um, the top, the tread of that first stair have to match that horizontal bracing there? It has to be right on that. Uh, where this ends? No, nope, the first um, stair tread. Yeah. Does that the have first to be, tread? Yeah. Does that have yeah. to match the brace? It's, it is matching the bracing now. The studs here? The, the horizontal. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. It, yeah. It has to do that. It can't be up or down from that. Is up that or down? Really, it, well, if we're trying to adjust a measurement, and maybe I'm behind a little bit, maybe we solve this, but. Um, if we're trying to adjust a height, if you try to adjust the height, then you change the height of the supports. I see. Yep. That's, yeah, that answers my question. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, Martin, so I think that the, I'm thinking like if if I were to do this, what, what I would do is like I would draw like thick chalk or something and draw a line from the top to the bottom, and then start measuring seven and three quarters and see what you end up in the end. What's the bottom? And that's your bottom. You have to fill that bottom. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think that the first step is, is actually, uh, I, 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 I'm not sure, but if my calculations are correct, the first step is actually going to be less than seven and three quarters, which is fine. Yeah, right. Because we're understanding that. Yeah, let's, yeah, we can do that. So 7.75 rise, which is the max, and then we'll will end up with whatever the, the platform has to be, unless we see that, oh, if we made it just a little shorter, then we can use a regular dimensional piece of lumber. Because if we say any right. rise that we need, that means we have to cut to the whatever size. So let's see if we can make it regular so we don't have to cut. Okay. Yeah, nice yeah. Absolute clarity. <laughs> Yeah, we're absolutely clear that we're confused. Okay, well, I, I can no, meet you guys easy. there yeah, when you're doing this. It's easy. I can help. Yeah. No, this is good. Let's do it. So, siding first, interior siding, then we do the measurements. Or, I mean, somebody could start measuring right now. Yeah. So, start measuring, start doing the siding. We can cut the two by fours. And Not siding, uh, interior plywood. Interior plywood. Well, yeah, and we should have somebody cut the two by twelve and start to fix them together if we can. Uh, or, or are you? Are we keep measuring part? But we wanted to get that measurement Every, right. Yeah, yeah. So, Katarina, what's your opinion on? Can we pre-cut the two by twelves, or do we wait till we have the interior siding and then measure? Probably the latter. Yeah. I think we gotta we gotta measure because in the real world things do not work. Right. Yeah. To okay. be, if, if, fair if, enough. Fair if, enough. If if the boards are like are like one sixteen is too long, they won't fit. Right. So one sixteen is nothing in the real world. Okay. And, and also be prepared for each step being a different length, because that could totally happen. If the walls are not perfectly plumb, which they probably okay. are not. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Alright. So be ready for some custom cuts, okay. Yeah. 
Right. Okay. Yeah, we can try and think about a way to get around that in the future, but right now we have, yeah, it's, it's already there, so we have to work with it. Yep. Mm-hmm. Again? I don't think so. Eating food will put probably half the people here down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I like to hear, yeah. 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 Feed Natalie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you must have a bolsa pasta. It should be my ready. Oh my god, pasta's the worst. It's a huge coma. I know. But I want that coma. Uh -huh. yeah, exactly. So, like, aren't you supposed to like load up on the uh, the pasta before you do like a marathon? Uh, yeah, 24 hours before. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, see. That was I thought it was like two hours before. Day. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll drink those beers. That's that's blue. Yeah, that's carb loaded. Oh, wait, 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 whoa, 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 whoa. What about Ken? So Ken wants to talk Ken. about. Uh, can yeah. we can we listen to Ken for a little bit? Yes. Yeah, let's go, Ken. Paul, thank you for you running another. Season. You want a warm round of applause? Yeah. Yeah. Ken, explain your situation. This is a campaign to save Ken. Let's, okay. let's see what it's about. Uh, do, do you want structured feedback? Or just Free Ken! Okay, this is what this wasn't the Okay, just speak up a little bit. Yeah. Hello? Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can I, can I, can come, can come close to the microphone? I can't hear when people speak far from the microphone. Or turn on your own microphone, Ken. I don't know how to go there since we're recording there. So, uh, speak into the mic. Uh, where's the mic? Uh, it's in the camera. It's in the camera. We'll hear you when you. Oh, can. I can hear you now. Okay. All right. All right. Um. Okay, uh, I haven't actually prepared anything yet. Uh, yet. Uh, so this is going to be a bit, uh, I don't know, all over the place. But uh, anyway, well, basically, um, in 2020, February 2020, I lost my job. So I uh, started on this um, project to try and get uh, 3D printers going in Indonesia. That's before I heard about the apprenticeship. So I was actually working on that before I came here, and um, um, now uh, fast forward to now. Okay, the apprenticeship has started. Um, I part of part of actually coming here uh, to be able to support my family while I was here away, not earning, not having money. I was going to sell some sort of some land that I have in Botswana, but. Um, I don't know. It's not selling. Nobody's mm. buying. So I was stuck between a rock and a hard place. Um, uh, but about two weeks ago, I got a call from my former boss at ATR. ATR is the uh, French aircraft manufacturer. Because uh, somebody passed away. The guy who was uh, handling Indonesia passed away about a month ago. So I was more or less offered the job. Oh, congrats. Uh, but yeah. It's not really what I want to do. Mm -hmm. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, no. Um, so basically, I'm under pressure from my wife to actually take the job because, oh, sure. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, at least it'll be stable income. But um, it's it's not really what I wanted to do. But uh, because we haven't sold the land and I don't have any money to send, or you know, that money was supposed to be support them while I was away here. So now. Um, uh, Yesterday I got news from my former boss. He said the project doesn't actually start to till the end of the year. Okay. So I have until the end of the year. At least can finish the apprenticeship. But uh, I think um, what we have, or what I see here, is the is an unprecedented opportunity where we could actually together, collectively, collaboratively, we could actually start up uh, a three D printing business because the technology is here. Um, the easy part is actually building the printers, building the kits. I mean, we can sell printers fully made, we can sell um, uh, kits, and also give away the, I mean, the, the plans are there already, uh, open source. Um, but, but what I mean is, um, uh, the production part is the easy part. It's actually the marketing, finding the customers, uh, 
That's where you guys come in. Yeah. Yes, can I not sit? Yeah. Any questions? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, um, uh, market analysis on um, our product versus others is going to be the crucial component in order to figure out the customer niche, right? Okay. Um, as, uh, it's like, who's, who's the big dogs and how do we compare to them and then what can we give that they can? Uh, which uh, the other thing is the, our manufacturing capacity. Oh. Like how many prisons are we able to uh, Crank out. sell right, per month? Uh, we could easily do one a day. Oh. One a day. Okay. Do, yeah. do you have a, a? That's for a finished, no kit it, or? Um, well, no, kit. more than one kit per day. Yeah. Okay. It's yeah. about three kits per day. Right. And one you, person. Oh, that's one person. One Just person operation. Three kits. Three kits a day. What about a finished uh, printer? Probably a day. Okay. The the bill of materials you have is uh, is that fully uh, yep. done for Indonesian markets? Or like a sourcing uh, actually, that part um, of for the Indonesian market, that's on hold. But since we're here, okay. let's let's look at the American market. Oh, yeah. Well, market, yeah. also, I have a lot of contacts with from my old church location life. A lot of contacts with people who Americans who are interested in helping overseas and are have relationships with many different communities that could benefit from that. And those churches might want to invest in those kinds of things to send to their partners overseas. Markets. Yeah. yeah. They'll buy printers, you're saying? Yes. Yeah, I could make, we could sit down, well, I could make a list, brainstorm a list of people I know, and we could, we could try to reach out to them. What's our support yeah. model? I mean, I know this is open source, but if we are actually marketing a product, that's going to be a really, really important aspect to making sure that, um, we're providing that value over the long run, and if we want to sell more, that's going to be something that's uh, well thought of. Of like uh, the support model, is it going to be a telephone? Is it going to be um, getting on a Zoom call? How long is it going to be good for? And then we we'll have to do it when you need parts. It would have to be an email inbox. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's uh, forum yeah. immediately that we can set up, and then just email and stuff. And you can offer, say, okay, per we have Ken is the hotline. Yeah. And talk to them. Uh, the and and the, service, yes. the 3D printers are finished products, basically, right? Kits I mean, or finished product? Or well, the design of it. I mean, uh, the, the iterative design of the the, the, the 3D printers we have is is a finished design. Okay. Yeah, Pro design. and Universal are yeah. are that state, and that's not even talking about any of the, of the larger stuff which we can, I mean, the 12 inch or possibly the 18 inch, and what we're gonna be building here with the one inch universal axes, I mean, that takes us into a whole new category of printers. And those are iterative Bigger. done, or are they still which, iterating? So big, well, I mean, we'll see where we are in two weeks, yeah. and you'll that, that, that question will be answered perfectly, but my, assumption on that is right now we've done all the mechanical and all the systems already this should work the, to the point that you simply now you know build a larger thing take your new photo shoot and product description all that put that on the website it should be like that and, and we'll see in, in a couple of weeks but is your focus going to be on this the, the unit which, whichever one we're selling solely um, focus. I mean, your. I mean, your focus on refinement on um, issues. What What's going to happen is when we start to scale, there's going to be new things that we find out about mm -hmm. the the thing that will have to be uh, remedied in, yeah. in some fashion, whether it's with stronger parts or um, a different type of. You know, there, there's a million things. Yeah, yeah, it will be. It will be um, as well as still learning. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. But yeah, so the idea is to set up, uh, it'll be like the apprentice almost, like set up a, 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 a business uh, and be able to take orders yes. for, for yeah. Yeah. in the US. Yeah. yeah. So why not a Shopify setup, Ooh. sexy looking website, you don't have to worry about design, whatever. Or you can list it on like Etsy or yeah. eBay, yeah. Like you can use existing sales channels. Yeah. Like All of them, yeah. yeah. Everywhere. Oh, well, we've been thinking about it. Yeah. And, um, Fund, like, uh, put money into Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, like, get deep into it. 
at the end, it doesn't cost much money, and most of our landing pages are free or open source. So, how, how are James going to be picked? How tied how tied to the open source ecology? So, uh, basically, with a product in the United States, if it's good, it'll be fire. So you've got to prepare for the reality of success. But if it's bad and something, it will destroy and and tarnish the reputation of the the people working behind it as well. So these things have to be taken very very seriously when you're putting a product on the open free market because it um, it's transformational in, in good and bad ways. Um, so when we put out a product, it's all of our response, not responsibility, but I would say it would behoove all of us to make sure that this product is refined so it reflects both our values and our um, you know, goal of actually replacing you know, 3D printers from other manufacturers. Yeah, but then you also have the aspect of the things that makes it unique, uh, yeah. the modularity and all that thi those things, uh, which, which fits within the open source sort of uh, um, yeah, aspects of but it. But selling an open source printer is different different than selling a 3D printer product from Office Depot or wherever the hell it is. You know what I mean? And we've got to think about those differences and make sure our customer is informed, so we're not yeah we're meeting their yeah. expectations we wherever we're. In the yeah, way. we can't change the product. But we need to present it in in the correct way. Right. We can say, hey, this is romantic, and you get to be a part of the journey, so but make that explicit at the beginning, so they're not expecting. There are software hand labs that have uh, 3D printers. Why not send them the device? There are other hand labs. Hundreds, thousands. Oh, around that the world. Fab labs. Fab labs. Yeah. Sorry. Spaces. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. spaces. Yeah. yeah. But no, also hand labs. Uh, for startups, I don't know sure. how many of them are hardware oriented. So just send them the printer to demo what they can do. I, I, don't, I, don't, I haven't seen a library of things you can readily print, for example. Like, mm -hmm. sure, I can have the printer, and, but like, what Who's am I using for? it for? Hmm? Who's paying for it? Well, that's, 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 our, that's yeah. our job to figure that out. We throw money yeah. at the problem. There's one option. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the other option that should, comes uh, out bootstrap it. along the modularity aspect is you can be, we can be doing kits. Like We know how to do frames well. We know how to do the universal controllers or the axes. So you've got these three things. That, okay, build any CNC machine. Here's the universal axis or the motion system that gets you there. So do it more at... Here's the construction set for crazy CNC machines kind of deal. Yeah, it's more than a 3D printer. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 And be explicit. That, hey, you you want to build a big CNC? Here's the frame. Yeah. yeah. You're already halfway there. Yeah. Now that's a powerful. That's a practice. selling point. Yeah. That's a very very powerful thing. Yeah. That yeah. Americans love utility beyond initial purpose. So who, yeah. who buys CNC machines? Makers. Makers. Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Same people that buy 3D printers, I assume. Yeah. Some, so so some the question is, how, how soon can we establish? We're already started. How soon oh. do we have customers? Yeah. So marketing, website? website? I mean, website. I would say that we can start the sales funnel, like put up Google Ads, driving it to the OSC website like right away with like a strong warning saying like lead time is two weeks or something. Yeah. Or to find friendly customers, like customers who are willing to give us feedback and not like, you know, write, you know, public reviews if something goes wrong yeah. I think first. So. If you're okay with it, if it sounds right to you, I think my church contacts would be, this could explode. Because every church contact I have has five or ten other people they know who love a particular nation and have invested in helping a particular community. And so there's like... I yeah, mean, it's know. a powerful tool. It means a lot to be able to 3D print. Uh, it yes, can really yeah. sound an extens extensive reality. And it that. would be a, a good... Kind of forgiving customer base too because I mean they I'll be, be the first customer. I'll buy one. Right. Because they their their motivation is they they're, well, they're wanting okay. to help a particular community. So uh, I think what are they for Heidi? It depends. Uh, which one? You have the universal and you have the pro. Uh, okay. What's, what's, the, what's the, the pro? Cost? What's the difference? Uh, the pro is uh, a kit or fully built. Fully built. Yeah. Well fully built it's one thousand nine hundred and ninety five. Okay. One thousand nine hundred and ninety. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. Yeah. That's love the, it. That's for the pro. That's for the pro. Yeah. But the kit is only half that. Yeah. The, yeah. the, the, the kit yeah. is uh, yeah. nine ninety five. It's pretty large, right? It's uh, eight, eight, inch, eight, eight inch. It's anything into the abstract world. So the eighteen inch one can print an object that's up to eighteen by eighteen inches, or yeah, that's about or what's the actual print size? 
18 by 18 by 18. 18 by 18. That's, that's 18 by 18. Okay. We're going to have to do YouTube videos to inform. Yeah. Like. Yeah. So who's willing to take the risk? Because it's a... Yeah, I'll definitely, I, no, 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 3D I'll printing is a part of my uh, reindustrialization plan for Ohio, so. I don't want to finance the, the initial marketing, the initial, like, oh, yeah. that, that. We have three Google ads, AdWords, yeah, with $10,000. Yeah, but that's money, not zero. Where does the money come from? To want to try we have a $10,000 grant for that. We, we have that, we're not using it. Okay. Okay, that sounds good. If someone can do it, it takes management time. Yeah, so okay. So, so if someone wants to manage that campaign, we've got it, 10 k per month. But also, if we have a per story, month? like per month, yes. Jesus, we can make it's, 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 it's not easy to do it. You got to know how to do it, <laughs> and you got to put the time into it. Yes, yes. has anybody? But that's that's like that uh, reach. I am. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but it's boring. It's a bit stupid boring. Wait, you done? Yeah. Well, I tried. Oh, okay. <laughs> you got to get a pro to do it right. Right, and they don't cost that cake. They cost uh, a whole, whole lot more. Those guys, the growth marketer. Oh, the, the know how you're talking about just money for the ads coming directly from Google, right? It's, it's a yes. Source. Yeah, right. So the free uh, setup that that's cool, but the guy who's going to manage, manage that, that, they're expensive as shit. No, but then they're clueless, and then it's not going to do what we need to do. So let's get one of those <laughs> over here. Let's initiate him. Completely convert him to the open source ecology cause. <laughs> Indoctrination. Knock him up if he doesn't uh, comply. <laughs> I like Do you it. want to start the one thing that's actually the We've got to really refine what makes this one different than others. Okay. I think the, it's the, the space is a huge approach. Yeah. It's, it, 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 it's, it's, it's a little bit of a gluttonous space right now because everybody wants to be on that train because it is the future of manufacturing a lot of it. What kind of, can you upgrade it? Like, so it's working now, two years down the road, can you upgrade it? It's, it's actually a lifetime design. So yeah. anything that breaks, you can fix. You can no, not repair. It. Upgrade it. Uh, yeah, upgrade it as in, as in, as in, as in, as in the step remover. Put a laser head on it. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Put other heads on it. Or, or stronger yeah. stepper motors. Whatever. You, it's all interchangeable. I think yeah. just the idea of the one-inch universal axis with the large stepper motors and the control that we have already, that in itself would be a good deal because nobody knows how to like all the hobby people. They don't know how to do that scale. They, they do the small ones. Mm -hmm. So that's a definite value proposition for a hobbyist who, who wants to mm -hmm. upgrade. And there's a lot of open source people that just have a lot of money that want to say a few to the other guys too. That's who I think we should really focus on. Yeah, and except uh, because of for these next months, I think crypto is going to be uh, in the headlines a lot too. There's going to mm -hmm. be a lot of people with uh, extra thousands to spend. Yeah. So if you can funnel in that money, pretty good. Yeah, we we'll definitely want to accept Impulse everything buys. on the planet. For sure. Impulse crypto buyers. Yeah. It's an indefinite market yeah, Absolutely. Idiots. All of them. So, so this is... <laughs> Reach you can't do yeah. setting this up <laughs> as a... This is crypto. Copy of all the past two big enterprises, right? Sorry? Copy, yeah. You're setting this up as a copy of all the Yeah, that's yes. the thing, man. That's, right? that's so that's that means that the entire software oh, stack yeah. needs to be replicable by yes. somebody else that we might not know. Yes, So true. that's tricky. Because most ERP tools are not free. You can start. You the so here's the deal about ERP versus a, like a solo entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. The solo entrepreneur IT infrastructure is much lower than that. So we can do, here's the solo operator mom and pop shop out of a garage, which is fine enough for like 100K a year. Easy. Mm -hmm. So we can leave it at that. Don't worry about the million dollar and up ERP solutions. Well, the businesses that require that, we don't need to go there yet. No, we could Here do we're going like to save Voodoo. camp. It's an open source court. Voodoo. Yeah. So stuff like that. Could be cute, simple. So I think the model and, uh, here is next two locations. Like if you can work for one location, we're not going to learn how to do this thing. So we need two locations. Ken, who's your partner in front? You are. No, no, no. Mm. We need one more. What do you mean? It, the the here whole here. point of doing this is to demonstrate that it's replicable, right? Mm -hmm. If at the oh. end of the day we're successful to sell kids but we can't replicate, we fail. Oh, right. So who is okay. the second person who's willing to invest mm. at least commensurate with you in another location to demonstrate the replicability? Mm. Probably a YouTuber or something, or a viewer, maybe. Mm. That's so cool. we can market it at the same we time. We can ask for a remote help. But like, uh, Why not one of us here? What are you yeah. trying to promote? Who wants to have 
for well, the that price can be replicated easily. Yeah, like I understand the concept, but like, why, why do you think that what we're doing now couldn't be replicated? We need to test it. We can't sit. <laughs> There's so many assumptions. Like we're here. Other than Ken, I don't know anyone else who's still working D3 with both Ken and Marchant here. Like we started, right, Christian, before you came, and none of us have finished yet. Well, Oh, okay. Well, so you already did so it. So I, I failed. Yeah. Already well, okay, it. wow. Okay, well, then yeah, so maybe you, you're the <laughs> ideal partner. <laughs> the diesel. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's a powerful story if we want to make it a Save 10 campaign or I don't Indonesia 3D printer um, charity, then... But it's not yeah. charity. Come on. No. Come on. Okay. Well, you were saying you were pitching it to your church and they wanted to help a country, so it sounded like they wanted the charity on their minds. Well, Ken isn't the charity. Yeah. The, the communities that the church is partnering with are the, the places uh, where they want goodwill giving going on. So they would, they would sure. be in the business of buying from Ken. Yeah, they would buy from Ken to yeah. like, give to their counterparts overseas that they have a relationship with, they invest in the war, etc. Yeah. Yeah, lifestyle is yeah. Like, yeah, this is all about lifestyle, right? Build lifestyle the future. Is current, yeah. The future is here. Upgrade. Do not throw away. Modularity redefined. Be a part of the future. We're selling this idea like it. that we're on to something that nobody else knows about. And because it looks different, it's kind of, you know, it's just like the tractor. It has a very, very cool aesthetic that you can't find in a, a lot of places. These things, the, the upgrade do not throw away is a key, 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 key thing for consumers right now, right? To say that it, it's, you never throw it away, you only upgrade is a very, very powerful marketing tool. And, and that's what we'll have to put our money behind, right? We're not talking about um, upgrading anymore. You won't buy another 3D printer in five years. You'll just upgrade the one that we've given you. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. Instruction. Instruction. Proof the instruction. Yeah. Proof. Yeah. Yeah. To make it yeah, yeah. Very competitive. Very easy. Um, yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. Crowdfunding. Equity. No, not equity. There's no equity. Uh, crowdfunding options. Can you guys consider that? Like Kickstarter. Kickstarter. Something like that. Or the Bitcoin equivalents. They're more open. Yeah. Because then, in that case, the financiers are is the public. So, but we would need awesome marketing and take six months to put one of those together. So, even if we work one person full time on it till the end of the year, it's not it's not trivial. But Christmas season's coming up, so if you if you want a product that might have some traction and and, and we'll be able to get out there, you need to think about October one or uh, November 1, really having a product up there, you know, uh, there's a lot of hot clickers out there, you know what I mean, that'll just, you know, gut, they'll be like, oh my god, you can upgrade it and you'll never throw it away, boom, they don't, you know, it, Americans are very, um, they do a lot of stuff with their gut, which is good and bad, <clears throat> but yeah, you gotta just set those expectations, whatever they're gonna be, you know, we're building the future. The future isn't perfect, but you know we're on this journey together, right? Yeah. Be a part of the future. When you buy one of our 3D printers, you're not you're not just buying a 3D printer. You're becoming a part of a community. You know what I mean? And then sell our community, and that'll bring in you know. Uh, part of the marketing team is right here. <laughs> <laughs> what, what would be the minimum uh, amount of uh, information marketing? Is, should a, a separate website be put up? Should um, absolutely, yes, absolutely. And you have to decide what the relationship to OSE is actually going to be because it's both a plus and a could be a possible detriment. Your your company that you've built here over the years, that it's a delicate thing, reputation. It's a delicate, delicate thing, and it shouldn't be underestimated the way that it can go either way. So just go into that open eyes. How about the next version? Were there some ideas to crowd funding? Crowdfund the next version of the printer. It's happening in two weeks, man. Right, but that's what's happening. I mean, I've heard you talk about it, and there's some mentions on the wiki, but it's not like a public awareness campaign that right. it is happening. In that case, right. we could finance that printer with based on the experience of having built the solder two. 
so that yeah let's let's I, I actually love that idea let's try and build um, around the campaign of hey we're building this we're building this we're building this and let other people say well where can I buy one or how can I get one and then once that says oh we're like oh we're glad you asked and then the marketing campaign for the actual selling goes I just worry about the product the, the, the product itself and um, matching it against what's actually out there for consumers now and just being really, really clear about what their expectations should be. If, if, if you do that, you'll be fine. So if you find, like, I think this is basically what you were suggesting, but find some YouTubers whose primary function is reviewing 3D printers. Yeah. The best way to build trust in one of the communities to have it. It's a great, 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 great. Somebody great in the YouTube channel yourself. But well, you want it to be a trusted source. We, we, yeah, we want it to be people that are already trusted in the community. So when they say this is a great 3D printer, all those people that they've already developed that relationship with will, will likely, you know, believe it. Yeah. But make sure we send them one and ask for feedback before you ask them to make a YouTube video because. Right, right. Yeah, yeah I, I think these content creators get a lot of eyeballs on them, so th they probably paid a lot of the time mm -hmm. to review some products. Yeah. Um, well, another day our goal is to uh, make an email explaining exactly our mission statement and why the stream printer, how that fits into it. Yeah. And uh, make them a part of the future. Like, there are two ways of doing it. The no cost and the, and the cost. And, and, and like putting money. I would, I'd there say there's a, a lot of gray in there. Uh, there is a lot of ways you can you can uh, position a product in the market with, without spending money. There is a lot. Like yeah. Zing, Shopify, a mess, uh, uh, email, uh, nice. marketing, YouTube, or well, Facebook, you, you, you could pay me like that, $50 or $100 you get a, 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 a lot of views, but there's this other way in which you can look for uh, influencers. Sure, but none of us is a marketing person here, so our job we, we might, might be somebody. Somebody might be, we don't know. Who? I'm just saying that. I can I can I can no, so. digital marketing, what's the biggest <laughs> budget you use on a, on a remote SEO campaign? Oh yeah, I, I see your time. I think we're already uh, uh, <laughs> through. Like, that's the problem. Yeah. Like, we, we lack the skills, so we don't know what we're doing. Go to our website, <laughs> hit that buy button, and that's it. Try try what Natalie has got going on. Yeah, that's the first platform. Yeah. I think that's going to be the fastest and the most forgiving. And then <coughs> yeah, just do it. Get the website up. Uh, get yeah. feedback. Get the uh, 100 3D printer influence ours to say, hey, can we just get free feedback? We're trying to work on this modular yeah, design to change the future. Can you just tell me where our weaknesses are? And we can focus on that, too. So we. Oh, sorry, well, if, if anybody well, in my, my church network writes, I can ask that. I mean, we can't count on this, but we can ask them to uh, review, video their assembly, mm -hmm. and, you know, like, we can ask them to do this. Yeah, and as a normal consumer, or like, uh, yeah, yeah, like, hey, this is also, you know, we're trying to make this available to everyone. You can help us do that by documenting you know, your use of it. Mm -hmm. uh, influencers are, are a critical component because they know the market already better than any of us do, mm -hmm. right? They know what 3D printer is the best already in their heads because they've spent hours and hours and hours reviewing them. Yeah. If they could give us honest feedback about where we are on that arch of the rest of them, that'll, that'll actually tell us our market potential and ability to compete. Yes, but we need to get to market as quick as possible rather than... And that's fine. It, it, rather than I'll rather the market design. and wait for the rest. Yeah. But... So it's, it, Equal as much time can be spent on explaining that whatever is wrong with this machine, we will iterate and fix, and you will be able to add it. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but like there's no, there's no uh, constraint, like speed constraint. It just happens that Ken is here. There's no. Well, he the, the speaking train has not existed before, so why is it now? Because we don't want to do, his do, do that new job. We're trying to save him from a boring <laughs> job. <laughs> <laughs> right, it's right, important family because the, the land wasn't selling, and that was well, fine. I understand that, yeah. but that I might need to land in Barcelona, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> that has everything to do with Ken, and nothing to do with the product and the business. But it's an opportunity. But it's the reason we need to go into sales quickly. No, what, what this means is Ken has ample amount of time between now and four months to focus on this deeply and get something with yes. So we're all here. No, no, we're the we're cash flow is for a couple of weeks. The and cash then we're gone. So he Ken is going to be alone. Right so, so who's your team? Ken, if you don't have a team. Well, that's what we're working on. He doesn't have a cash flow. He's your second person. Well, Christian, because he built it. Like, right? 
going to be a business partner. I think that's your first break. Find a key. He's we don't have a key. And, well, what I would need to talk to my contacts would be, what is it? What can it do for your community or the community that you love? Um, what do you have to do to assemble and use it? And what are the customer service channels? So I have that written down. And if maybe we can, we can uh, hash that out and I can get a clear, like, layperson explanation of what a 3D printer is, you know, all those questions. Yeah, and I can and explain it to, you know, like pastors. Packages as a, a teach them how to fish sort yes, of thing. Yes, exactly. That's, that's what's exactly. going to jive with theirs. Right. No, right. don't, don't you do marketing? Between a scanner, a 3D scanner. She does marketing. And a 3D print. Mm -hmm. A scanner will take the yeah, measurement I mean, of I'm, something. I'm not trained, like I haven't so used a budget to run Google Ads, but I am in that realm. Yeah. What exactly did you do in that realm? Yeah, they're, they're a bit expensive, the scanners. There's w several ways to do it. Uh, you rotate a camera, hopefully with two lenses, around the object. It will read the depth distance of, of the whole thing and then upload that and make it a 3D file. And it's, when it's a 3D file, you slice it and then it's ready for 3D printing. So you can when get dimensions through a 3D scanner. When, when uh, I, I got interested in a 3D printer, it was my imagination going about something that I wanted to be produced for so uh, like where I take uh, uh, if I if things that were even now in my head if I can scan it and then you show me how that from that scan that 3D printer I can it can actuate then yeah, yeah. Be the some newer phones can do it but it's still like a bit of an expensive product so like you need an iPhone for like twelve hundred dollars to to so does that have anything to do with the supplementary kind? Supplementary Like a normal ink inkjet printer yeah, exactly. for, for paper or describe what is what, what you mean by supplementary. So the supplementary printer is like um, for all the hobbyists uh, and I'll say female that will go, are gonna make the t shirts, make your hat, make your cup. Cricket. Cricket. All of those people cricket, right? The cricket. Um, and they're buy and we're buying supplementary printers mm -hmm. to do that. So that's what I'm asking. Is this have anything to do with the system? No, this is no, these no. printers are especially for making yeah, three-dimensional objects out of plastic. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's like a it, yeah. yeah. You so can what, do that. You can put a vinyl cutter head on this. This is doable. A small scale. Interesting. So but now we're getting into this idea. No, I was just, I was just All right. this is add-ons. Well, yeah. Mark, to answer your question, yeah. the, the thing that Ken needs, I was just learning as part of a coding and digital marketing business course that I am enrolled in. That I'm, so I haven't ever done it. I'm just a student, but I, I'm familiar with What did you do for your job in but marketing? But that, yeah, that was just like smiling and wearing a t-shirt with the brand on it and handing out a free thing to give me your email. That's like you know, it's pretty simple. Okay. But it did it did give me access to that world and a more mm -hmm. yeah. So I I'm interested in learning more and um, I, I'll help at whatever level I can. Yeah. How much is the land in the floor? <laughs> it's uh two two hundred and sixty thousand pula, which is about just under twenty six thousand US dollars. It's uh six and a half hectares. Six and a half hectares. Hectares, hectares, not acres. It's how much? So twelve. It's twice, right? Uh, two and a half times. Yeah, I don't know. I thought it was times ten, but then it's times ten. Twenty-six thousand dollars. The property tax. Sweet. The property tax. Well, yeah. Somebody's gonna have to go rep the the U.S. over in Africa and be like, hey. We can build infrastructure too. <laughs> so what's the next step? I mean, I see website and start selling. Yeah. Why do you need a team wife? Because Four. she's alone and she's not going to be here forever. What if it goes good? And and we're, we're taking. What if he gets a hundred orders? Yeah, but that's that's when you get a team. That's, that's yeah, dangerous. Right. That's, that's you can scale. He can scale to a hundred orders per month right now. So, so you don't need a team until you reach that. For that, we have a few months. It's not a team for scaling production. It's a team to fill in the gaps that his business needs. There's marketing. There's functions that he doesn't know what to do. Yeah. That doesn't come free. Right. And that's, that's where we're talking about it. I can. I yeah, can. I know. But like, 
you why can't we just uh, use fiber? Mm -hmm. Just find whatever specific, very specific skill that you're missing that you really want on Fiverr or okay. like in the freelance sites. Well, sure, and the management you know, so like, well, you, you post jobs that are freelance hours and 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 Good question. <laughs> well, and also a question. Who, who is available to devote time to this? Like, I, I definitely have interest, but I haven't yet evaluated if I have time. So, That's is okay. anybody, like, thinking? I, I've written three right points here. Start a website with a buy button, copywriting around the values and unique sell selling point of the OSC 3D printer, and start as marketing, finalities, mm -hmm. contact network, Google search optimization, and Facebook marketing. I don't know websites. Copywriting, writing, I can do. I can get into the marketing and I can even uh, talk to some friends in Peru. They're going to keep me good prices. We can do something decent. I think it's a good idea. Like that is, well, well, yeah, but... What? They will, a, they'll actually run a business like that there or no? Yeah, yeah they've, they've done like freelance uh, to uh, customers in the US. Yeah, but actually run a 3D printer enterprise producing them down? No, just... just uh, not for real or more like for uh, yeah. idea. Yeah, I would, I would yeah. bring them here, train them, and then wherever they want... Put them in a cage. <laughs> <laughs> just a little bit. Yeah. 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 Keep I, the plasticity. <laughs> I do have people also that want to do an enterprise and 3D printers back there. But we are competing in exactly the same markets. Like Pusa and all those guys. Uh, let's get clear on a value proposition and there's a lot to be done on that and to, to outline exactly where this fits in that's a big point that that will sell itself mm -hmm. like for example we can print rubber faster than anyone else on the market hmm. so there's uh, details once you get into the tech that <laughs> are hands down superior uh, nobody knows that because we we never spend the time to communicate that Dude, there's a rubber shortage globally right now. <laughs> I mean, no, a shortage. You no, contribute to it. It's the other way around, right? Is anybody no. feeling a, led to like recycle yeah, rubber? Like all the like all the stuff. Yeah. There's a page. We're talking about all of them. But uh, so a, a, a website just a website just for this business. Yes, I would almost. Oh, I see. Is it? Uh, so we're not saying we create the rubber shortage, yeah, but there is a rubber shortage. So right now we have the fastest rubber printer that exists out there, for example. Yeah, we do. But you have to you have to understand that. You have to learn more about it and actually show it with case by case. Okay, here's what Prusa can do, and here's how we eat them up. Uh -huh. So like maybe RC, uh, like wheels for uh, 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 printers. Big, like can we do right? side by side? RC control wheels. Yeah, it would be any printer, you just have to say side by side, what's the cost, extrusion rate, size, all of that. Well, no, I mean like, so, so she was see from the infomercials where they have like, you know, your like, shitty dish open, show, and like your magical dish, dish open, and you're like, oh, look at how little they did. Like, so like just do one print right next to another try and print the exact same thing, not ready yet. and then you can just see it, like do it out for What you can do is right now say, here's our printer, and here's another one, and ours printing like five times faster. Yeah, but we don't actually But there's other ones that we don't sort of make. It doesn't have to be super fancy, but we can't do that with. We don't so have we can to be the best. Yeah, I mean, we don't I'm have to be the best. We need to right. be for yeah. someone. Yeah. We did, design. Yes. I can the design. Because there is a romantic aspect. I'm just saying, yeah. don't make the romantic yeah. aspect yeah. all of it, you know, right? We need a good product. Yeah. But the open <laughs> source, <laughs> never. you're never going to need to buy another one because we will help you upgrade as 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 the future, you know, expands and stuff. Ken, what's the, the material cost? Of just the raw stuff that you need to build the, the, the um, I haven't looked at the prices here, but when, in, when I was in Indonesia for a universal, it was about three hundred dollars. Three hundred dollars for the just the material. That's yes, just the material. Yes, just the material. Oh, okay. And you will, so your packaging yeah. um, it actually, and actually, actually, it sorry, it's actually less. I, uh, I mean, I added about a twenty percent for shipping. But some parts came from China. But we're in we're in America now. So what are they here? It's the same. I don't know. No, it's the same. Right. Comparable. Comparable. No. Okay. So then, on the just selling the kit, you know, the markup was what? Twenty thirty percent. Uh, well, about. Well, it's 50% materials, 50% labor is the basic model. No, no, not the labor, just to put mm. them together as a kit so that you can build it at home, that, that version. Not the build it from fully. Mm. And it's, 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 it's back in both cases. 
Okay, so it's for 50 once and then 50 again. So for 300 plus 50, you end up to 450, right? Total. That's how much you charge your clients. No, like 100 percent. Uh, 300 materials sell for 600. That's a basic model. Okay, sure. But time. who decides this model? Like, why why not put it 50 uh, percent instead of double 100 percent? Yeah, if you want to compete in the marketplace, I, I don't know how the market yeah, was to choose. Yeah, there's, there's an infinite number of avenues. Yeah. Okay. But it's just material, so like from day right. term, so, so you're, you're uh, taking the labor. Complexity. No, no, one sec. You're taking the complexity out of having to order the parts by yourself, right? So that's the value prop for the just basic bare bone kit. That's okay. one website page, right? The other website page is the full blown kit that requires technical how know how and expertise at however much you want per hour to build the thing. Mm -hmm. What's that hour rate? That's the hard mm -hmm. thing. Yeah, but that's the sort I of thing. That's a hard part of the sell too, because it's so much hands on, hands on it, in case it scales. You really need to get a team on board. Mm -hmm. Like if you yeah, have extensive. Uh, imagine that like um, they start calling you as a customer service. Who's gonna be oh, picking up? Yeah, ten percent of those customers are gonna be you know, eighty percent of the calls. Ken, 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 Ken has the time. If he's got a hundred orders, he can handle that per mm -hmm. month. That's a call a day. You might spend an hour per day on the customer service. It's it's doable. It sounds I've done like it. Um, yeah. Yeah. It sounds okay. like we um now is is willing to help the website. It sounds like you're willing to help with like copy copywriting and, uh, and getting the picture because that's what you said needed. Well, like, design is design. So design and is the overall thing. If I have a design, I can make the website. There's there would be a a, new, a class of stuff which to me I think is the critical thing in terms of showing the value, and that is okay. Here's the technical actual running data, data collection. Here's how fast we print rubber, here's how fast Prusa does it, here's how Ultimaker prints it, and we gobble them up. Like that's one, that's one. But there's a lot of different elements like that. You have, here's are your expensive data points, graphs, and stuff like that. And then we, we find that we blow, blow them out on, on some. You can s say, mm -hmm. oh, okay, we're doing this, and it's like, oh, that, that's way, way better than someone else. Or here's, you know, we're not strong at that. Like is gonna have an extremely high quality print, from our perspective, we say the printers suck so much that they have to have specialized filament that they make themselves. Mm. You know, it's like, however you look at it. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Because they're so precise, they actually need spe specific filament. Yeah. Which from us, it's like, no, we're printing from trash, we're gonna do that. That's the next part. Printing from the trash. trash, holy shit. Yeah, but we need to do that. Yeah, we, we got to do that out, next but week yeah. and we'll be yeah. doing it. Yeah. So we're actually very close to explosion, like after the larger and the trash and the high temperature printing. So that's hmm. coming up. That's coming I have a question. Month. Well, two actually, but uh, printing rubber, is that rubber or a rubber like filament? It's rubber, it's thermal plastic elastomers, which are rubber okay, like, not so for example, not it's natural not natural rubber, rubber no. that's thermal set. Okay, the second question is, where do I get the t-shirt? Yeah, I'll buy one of those right yeah, now. Put the t-shirt. <laughs> get the t-shirt, sells out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Put them on the site. Who's going to do it? Those will kick ass. I have a question. Who, is there anybody who does like doing design? T-shirts and printers. Who would be willing to yeah. help yeah. this website? Yeah, I think it's good. I'm sorry. Point on design for the website. I don't think we need, like, custom designs necessarily. Like, Shopify or whatever. Yeah, you can do a lot of, like, Yeah, we get to pick. Shot open stack. Does we that also, have to be open stack? That's well, the whole point. Yeah, I say we do go open stack if we're going to be trying open to sell a new with replicability. Like, you can sell a business development package, too. That's, yeah. that's so another problem. So I understand problem. that they have. I understand the Buy business. Buy printer. printer. Yeah. Buy a business plan. Buy printer. Buy a Buy a printer. Buy a printer. I think once you have capital, we can invest back in developing it. Open stack. Uh -huh. It total sense. But from the standpoint of the amount of infrastructure you need to build a website, like from scratch, you build it from scratch. It's so much easier to pull up a WordPress site. Yeah, so you don't have to go with a VM, you have WordPress so, site. So here's my thought on that. And a, a really good template on a wiki. And that's it. A high quality template on a wiki that looks professional, looks like a real website, but it's just a wiki. And then it's completely 100% scalable. Anyone can clone it right now. Sure, yeah, but, but, but you also. Trade -off. So we can't get off, it. but it's one one way to do What it. about domain? I mean, it's the most aligned with replica. Yeah, yeah. no, I agree from the standpoint of like we can make a, a design of them and available, but in terms of the infrastructure, you need to run the servers, you need to run the server somewhere, like code somewhere. Yeah, I mean, I can help with all From that. Wiki? That's available for free. For our site. No, so do it on our wiki. 
our wiki is the incubation too. Why not? Put your business on our wiki too. Because the domain. How do you handle orders? Like order placement? Well, there's, there's, there's open alternatives to yeah, yeah. Uh, Shopify. There's a tool there, but um, how do you, I don't know enough to know how you embed that into the wiki. Maybe it's not a big deal. I think the hardest thing is to make a giant with the uh, cards. Any, any Card page. Was, was it? You, you can API and call it into any like payment system and have them as the transactor, yes. and all they'll do is send you an app. How are you going to Yeah, and we will all take extra talent. Either up front, there is, there are probably like two to three percent. There's always transactions. It's a distributed thing. What's the equity, you know? What I'm able to to get customers for them is I need something simple and simple that I need to look at all day and so that's all I need like it doesn't have to be fancy doesn't have to be even ready to buy yet or set up for Shopify it has to be a description take her to the dungeon I know you got some more money from the dungeon I try to set up a WordPress site with that but I know like you can get to the energy of people I don't know if I can get to the energy of people no, that's a big part of it. No, that's What if Ken was to pay you? What? What if Ken was to pay you so you can double your energy? <laughs> my, that's how my energy gets plus. Oh, no, no, yeah. Okay, <laughs> I said, how about if Ken pays you and that doubles your energy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's true. It's like, what it's if I give you money? And you're like, oh, interesting. Right. I do have that energy. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. My face is not visible. So, so Ken, yeah. what, what's your uh, equity model like? What, what, what does your cap table look like? I don't see. I don't like shopping with money. You're, you're, you're always tied to yeah. what does it look like? Uh, I feel like it's so early. I feel like uh, that's it. He said that his core of his business is. Uh, he said he wants to pay us with equity. Yeah, whatever. Oh, there's no model yet. There's no model yet. There's no, model yet. There's no capital. Everything is. Well, well, yeah. Yeah. Every, all the materials and everything. Uh, no, I can throw up a website. We don't have to make a design from scratch. Like, you just send me a screenshot of Shopify's default template and then choose like three pictures and say, like, these are the product photos. Yeah. And that's it. It doesn't have to be like a custom design. There's got to be something that's like self hosted because it's like. Yeah, so it's just a Yeah, so Firebase or Wait, what's so it's Shopify the problem is it's not open source. Right. Right. There's Magento, which is like the PHP version This is a demo. Is it open source? Yeah, Chinese are like, show me everything you're doing. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, a 3D printer open source. I think we could do it better. What do you think? This is like the boring back, like this is the landing. Yeah. The, the creative element is, is the marketing brains that we need. I mean, I would say that people who do it now should do it because they like working with Ken and we're here and fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any sweat equity is seriously like, like someone can promise. What is a sweat equity? Like, I don't even understand the concept of this. Set equity, equity you said, we work on something and we can trust that in the future, whatever company can be divided according to the future. Pretty and accessible to the final end. I would be honored to be your first customer. Yeah. 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 All right, just let me talk to you but then you work on the hypothetical. Uh, right. If okay. it's going to be Let's that, uh, then that's how the sale is going to be. That's how we should have done it. We're going to say, Ken. Okay. Because uh, it can go uh, south. Well, developing a business for everybody. Hopefully. Well, I mean, it's a good lesson. You want to take the risk, and you also want to be fair and reward the tools. I know what you're saying. It's just because like, I'm in a current partnership where things are different and tell It's definitely a worthwhile discussion. But that's the, that's the whole concept of collaborative enterprise development. You generate all these assets, like you saying, oh yeah, I'm going to write some copy. Okay, throw that on a wiki. It's usable, we can edit it, but it's there. It's something to work with. You know? Yeah. Yeah, I think like, this is a core
we have the money that is saving ten. But I was, I was, I was assuming we were asking for help, not to be. I was helping him. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're contributing to the. Yeah, but it's also when you're selling something, you need to make it in lots of products. That is an operation that will need constant attention. You know, they're working, but they're constant. I feel more compelled to help you get it. I don't know. I don't feel like I've got to change houses. I've got to change houses. It's a great house.